Welcome to this Final Cut Pro 10 training. My name is Larry Jordan, and this is Chapter 9, Audio. In this session, I want to give you an overview of audio inside Final Cut Pro 10. During this session, I'll define a waveform, list the supported audio formats within Final Cut Pro 10, present the absolutely number one rule for audio, show you how to change the audio settings for a project, show you how to use audio meters, show you how to adjust the audio volume and pan settings for a clip, how to create audio fades, and how to mute, solo, disable, or delete an audio clip. A waveform is a visual representation of the loudness of a sound. Loud sounds have tall waveforms. Soft sounds have short waveforms. Human speech is bursty, which means waveforms vary rapidly. In fact, each syllable we speak is a specific burst within the waveform. Because waveforms represent volume, you always want to edit speech where the waveform is as short as possible. Music, on the other hand, is more continuous, which means waveforms vary more slowly and generally in smoother curves. Final Cut Pro 10 supports the following audio formats. AAC, AIF, BWF, CAF, MP3, MP4, and WAV. For the first time, compressed audio is supported in Final Cut Pro. There are two types of audio levels in Final Cut, relative and absolute. A relative audio level is displayed when you're changing the level of a clip. You're changing the level relative to the level at which it was recorded. On the other hand, an absolute audio level is what is displayed in the audio meters, the absolute accurate measurement of the specific volume of the sound, whether for a single clip or a mix of the entire project. So this brings me to the absolute number one rule for audio. You want to write this on your wrist and always remember it. Audio levels during playback must never exceed zero dB. Not for a clip, not for a mix, not once, not even for a short time, not even because you think no one will notice. Never. It sounds bad and it will get you fired. It is absolutely a big deal. Audio levels must not exceed 0 dB. So, that means we've got to watch our audio levels, and that means the audio meters. Audio levels are displayed in the audio meters. And Final Cut's audio meters display what's called DBFS, decibels full scale. They display peak levels, not average or RMS levels. Also, you should know that audio is logarithmic. Whenever the audio level increases by 6 dB, the perceived volume doubles. This means that minus 6 dB on the meters is the 50% point for audio gain. Cut it by another 6 dB down to negative 12, and it's at the 25% point for audio gain. So this sets up an intense conflict of interest. We want to have our audio be as loud as possible, as close to zero as we can manage, but the audio must never, not once, go over zero. So it's a balancing act. How close do we get it without going too far? We'll talk about this later in this chapter in the session on mixing. We use the audio meters to monitor our levels. Audio meters are displayed in two different places, in the center dashboard and to the right of the timeline within Final Cut Pro 10. So let me illustrate how to display audio waveforms, how to show or hide the audio meters, the keyboard shortcut is Shift-Command-8, how to modify the audio meter display, and how to change project settings from surround to stereo or back. I've created a project with Dr. Vint Cerf, and if we look at it really, really closely, Notice that we see pictures, but we don't see audio. To display audio waveforms, we'll go down to this switch and turn this switch on. And there's six different states. We can see just the audio waveform, or a little bit of picture and a lot of audio, or sort of an even balance between the two, or just barely see the audio, suppress the audio, or turn off the pictures. For the purposes of this, I'm going to set it to the middle position. We're not adjusting the volume as we adjust the height of the display. We're simply making the waveforms easier to see. 
If we grab the slider and drag back and forth, we can make our waveforms and the pictures for that matter bigger. The whole clip height expands and we'll make this a little bit larger so we can see what we're doing. To hide this, turn the switch back off again. Now the picture, we're familiar with that. We've been working with that all along. The waveform, notice how this tends to be bursty, how it works in, in very short peaks. If we go in, zoom in, command plus, we can see that there's a lot of variation from one moment to another as we zoom in on our timeline to see more. That's command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out, and shift Z, shift Z to fit the entire timeline inside the window. So we now display our audio. If I go back to the beginning and start to play it, we can see the audio meters are moving here. I've suppressed the audio for the purposes of this recording. But it's kind of hard to see. It's nice to see that they're there. But it'd be nice if we could see them bigger. There's two ways we could do it. We could go all the way up to the window menu, go all the way down to show audio meters, or type the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-8, which is just way too complex to remember, or just click once on the audio meters. And when you click once on the audio meter, it opens up bigger audio meters. I'm not talking just a little bigger. I'm talking grab the edge of this thing and watch what happens. We can make these audio meters seriously big. <laughs> I knew I could make them wider, but as I was researching this, I said, whoa, this is great. So we can slide these audio meters into very, very small, or very, very wide. And just so we can see them easily, I'll sort of split the difference. If you want to hide the meters, click this again. Single click, it's not a double click, single click to hide or display the audio meters. Or Shift Command 8 if you feel that a keyboard shortcut is the only way that you can fulfill your life. One other thing before I forget. Notice that right now we're seeing a stereo display. By default, Final Cut does a surround display, so clearly I needed to convert from one form, surround, to another form, stereo, of audio. There's a couple different ways we can do this. One is to select the timeline, go up to the File menu, and go down to Project Properties. Inside Project Properties, it opens up the inspector. And you notice down here there's this wrench symbol. Click the wrench symbol. This opens up the specific technical properties for this project and you can change this between surround and stereo. I wish there was a way to set the default to stereo because I'm not doing surround mixing particularly and I'm not interested in doing surround mixing. It'd be nice if we could just have a default to stereo, but we can't. It always defaults to surround. So one of the things that you'll want to do is to change your audio properties to stereo. Once you've done that, click OK. To show you the difference, I'll set it to surround, click OK, and now I've got my 5.1 surround monitoring here. Or click the wrench, set this back to stereo, click OK. Now I'm back to stereo monitoring again. Let's double click our project to load it back into the timeline. Shift Z to get it to center and see what else we're going to cover. So let me show you how to adjust the audio volume of a clip and explain what the green, yellow, and red colors mean. I'll show you how to create a fade in or a fade out to a clip, how to adjust the pan of a clip, how to display audio waveforms separately by either expanding or detaching the audio from the video. I'll illustrate how to solo or disable a clip and show you how to delete the audio from a video clip. So let's see how all this works. There's several places where we can adjust the audio volume for a clip but probably the most convenient is this heavy black line. When I click the heavy black line, notice the small box that appears with numbers that move up and down. We are making a relative change to the audio. The level at which it was recorded is the zero dB level. Sometimes audio is recorded loud, sometimes it's recorded soft, but rarely is it recorded at exactly the level that you need. We need to tweak it. If I grab this line and pull it down, my audio gets softer. Notice the waveforms shrinking. If I play it, the audio is barely audible. If I grab this and drag it up, notice the waveforms are getting taller and the audio is much louder. 
In some sense, we accidentally suppress that. Not only is it louder, but look what's happening here. I'm starting to see colors appear. I've got the blue of the clip and then yellow. And then if you look really, really closely, there's red at the top. Blue means your audio levels are safe. Yellow means they're getting close to peaking, which means zero. And red means they are either at or over the zero dB line. Well, let's just play this clip for a second and watch the audio meters. And they are eager to learn and in some sense. And notice over here, there's an indicator at the top of the meters that says minus four. This says that the loudest our audio has gotten during playback is at minus four. I'm gonna pull my audio levels back down again, type shift Z so I can see the entire project. Notice that all of my audio levels have lost that red and yellow tinging, which means the audio levels are, are now safely below zero as natural scientists. I'm going to talk in our session a little later in this chapter on mixes about where to set audio levels to get the best results, but for right now it's enough to know that we can get warning by looking at the colors of the clip inside the timeline as we pull that black line up and down. Well there's another place that we can set the audio level for a clip. If I select the clip and go to the inspector, which I have open here, and go to the audio tab right up here, notice I've got a volume setting. I can grab the volume setting and it does the exact same thing as dragging that black horizontal line up or down. I can even click on the number here and type in, I want this to go down 3 dB, and it's as though I had dragged this line down 3 dB. Whichever works the best for you, grabbing the line, adjusting the slider, or typing in a level, all of those will work. If you ever need to reset a clip to get back to the way it was recorded, click this curved arrow. That's your reset button. That takes all of your audio volume and pan back to the level at which it was recorded. If you need to adjust the pan of an audio clip, that's done here under pan mode. If you set this to stereo left right, it pans the clip to fill the stereo spread from the left to the right speaker. All the rest of these settings deal with surround panning, and we'll talk about that in the session later in this chapter on surround mixing. For now, we're just going to leave this set to stereo left-right. Sometimes we want to be able to see our audio waveforms separate from the clip. To do that, select the clip that you want to separate, and now you have two choices. You can go to the View menu and go down to Expand Audio Video Clips, and we'll do this for all. And notice that now all of my audio is a separate clip from the video. It makes it easier for me to see what the audio looks like. But there's another option. Let's put these back together by, say, collapse all clips, and now our audio and video are all married together again. But another way that we can deal with audio separately is to go to the clip menu and say, detach audio. Now I have two separate clips. I have one clip which is just video and one clip which is just audio. Now there's a strength here in that now I can deal with the audio totally separate than the video, but it's also possible for me to move the audio, which moves my audio out of sync with the video, and notice there's no indication that my audio and video have moved out of sync. So be very, very careful when you're detaching audio for a synced clip because it is possible to screw this up and have their lips moving and the audio not be in sync with it. But this does give me a chance to show one more thing. To protect ourselves, let me just do undo, command Z, and marry those two clips up again. Sometimes we want to put a fade at the beginning of a clip. For instance, listen to this. I think it is inescapable. Okay, so now we want to do a fade. Notice this little round jobby that appears at the beginning and the end of the clip that my skimmer is in. Grab that with the skimmer. I'm going to drag it way over, hit the home key, and play it. I've just added a fade. I think it is inescapable that whatever success I've had is... And now we'll drag one at the end. ...is a side effect of having been trained as a mathematician. Okay, so now we've got a fade at the beginning, and we simply click, hold, and drag this back and forth. We can get rid of it totally. Cool. We also have the ability to solo a clip, to mute a clip, or to delete a clip. Let me show you how. Let's select here. If I want to solo a clip so I see that clip and no other, click the solo button. Notice how the clips on either side of it went black and white. But the problem is I've soloed, 
I think children start out as... Both the video and the audio. Well, let's do an experiment here. Let's turn solo back off and go to clip detach audio. Notice we've got a separate field here. We've got a separate clip. Highlight that clip and now click solo. I think children start out. Well, we can't hide the video, even though it's gone gray. But now we've soloed this audio. Turn this off. The other thing that we can do is we can do what's called disabling a clip. Keyboard shortcut for that is the letter V. Notice that now I have disabled the clip. I see the video, but I don't hear the audio. You can find this in the clip menu here. Under Enable, that turns it back on. Or Clip Disable, that turns it back off. V is a toggle. It toggles the audio on. You can hear it. Off, you can't. And later as a computer scientist. I'll type the letter V. As natural scientists, they are inquiring, they have inquiring minds. And the letter V again. To learn, and in some sense, we... There we go, the letter V a third time. Now, one more thing. Let's say I want to get rid of this audio. I detach it. Remember, you detached it by going to Clip, Detach Audio. Once it's detached, select the audio, hit the Delete key. And now we have video only without the audio. So just to go through that whole process, let's say we wanted to get rid of the audio on this clip. Highlight the clip, clip, detach audio, select the audio, and delete the clip. Audio is an essential element of almost every project. Understanding how to adjust your audio while making sure your levels remain below zero dB is essential. And the rest of this chapter goes into more detail on how to make your audio sound great. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Final Cut Pro 10 training.